Coming up, Ryan Nelson looks like the real deal, and Lindsey Crosby tells us the top five prospects in the D-backs organization after the Corbin Carroll promotion. All that on today's podcast. You are a Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day listening to who? The always charismatic host of this podcast, Milwaukee Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer, so please go check out my website, milletom 24myportfoliocom On there, you can see all my latest work, from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. If you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter, at CreatorThomas24 for my personal account, or just look up Locked on Dimebacks for Twitter instagram for the podcast handle and of course we're also on youtube so go check out the locked on diamondbacks podcast for all our podcasts in video form if you guys want to see my ugly or handsome mug depending on how you guys feel about me and also thank you for making locked on diamondbacks your first listen every day i would not be able to do this podcast without you my loyal listeners sharing subscribing reviewing doing all that so i could do this podcast for you thank you it's free and available on all platforms so please continue to tell your friends enough of the hoopla to start the podcast let's get right into it because we had ryan nelson make his debut against the san diego padres and he did not disappoint ladies and gentlemen because i don't know what we should have expected from Ryan Nelson in his debut, but what we got, I don't think anyone expected because he absolutely blew our way our expectations in game one as a starting debut pitcher. He went seven innings, seven strikeouts, only allowed four hits, no walks, no earned runs, an absolutely filthy and dominant start by Ryan Nelson. And basically, not basically, I always say basically when I'm about to give a fact, this is a real fact. Since 1901, since 1901, there has only been one other pitcher to make his debut and have at least seven scoreless innings with at least seven strikeouts and no walks allowed as Nick Kingham of the Pirates in 2018. I don't even know who that is, so he must have been a one-hit wonder. But for Ryan Nelson, let's hope Ryan Nelson isn't a one-hit wonder for the D-backs because the D-backs, as I always say about this team and in regards to their future, I say three years from now, I'm confident in the D-backs having a top five lineup in baseball because basically I think it's almost impossible for this D-backs not to have a top five lineup in baseball in basically three years because there's no way they go 0 for 3 on Corbin Carroll, Drew Jones, and Jordan Lawler. Like literally if just one of those guys hits and God forbid two of those guys hits plus the Rojas, the Marte, the Christian Walker, the Carson Kelly, uh, the Dalton Varsho. Um, the Alec Thomas, all those guys already in the lineup. The Stone Garrett. Now I get two of the three of Lawler, Corbin Carroll, and Drew Jones. Like, yeah, the D-backs lineup is going to be elite and one of the best in baseball within three years, maybe four years, because those guys are going to need time to adjust. Specifically, Drew Jones, who will be the last one to be called up. But I always say their lineup, I'm not worried about from the future's perspective, but their pitching is what we need to worry about. Because one, I mean, you look at the rotation. I love Zach Gallen. He's a beast. He no problems with him. Merrill Kelly, he's been very good this year, but it's not like he's a spring chicken. Like, yeah, he hasn't been in baseball that long, but he is a guy in his early 30s. So we're going to need more rotation depth. Zach Davies, I don't think he's a guy that's like a long-term answer. So the D-backs rotation desperately needs more young pitchers because we know Madison Bumgarner is just burning our money on fire right now. And when you look at the D-backs pitchers throughout the last few years, like there's been a lot more misses than there have been hits. So I've always been skeptical about can the D-backs actually develop pitchers from their minor league system and turn them into reliable starters or bullpen arms? Because so far this season, I mean, Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson have both been very solid rotation arms. I mean, Ryan Nelson, of course, only one start looked fantastic. Tommy Henry, you know, his stuff isn't elite, but he's been very effective in the starts he's made. Now we do need to find some guys for the bullpen because that hasn't been in. That's been a big issue for the D-backs. And it doesn't seem like Mike Hazen is getting any closer to figuring out a formula or a strategy to signing relievers in the offseason. Right now, his only strategy is to sign guys over the age of 38, who's usually his best days, whose typical best days were like four to five years ago and are just 
way on the back end of their career. That's like the prototype of Mike Hazen. Are you 38? Have you not been good or effective in the last four to five years? Like those are the check marks that Mike Hazen looks for in a reliever. Are you about to retire? And this is going to be your last stop. Do we have to convince you to come out of retirement? Oh yeah. Come down to Arizona and you could come in our bullpen and be one of our main guys out of the pin in high leverage moments like Oliver Perez was at this point in the season, if you even remember Oliver Perez. So Mike Hazen, I don't have a lot of confidence in him as a as a GM going out there and fixing the bullpen when it comes to free agents just because he hasn't shown, shown us anything in that department. So I think it's going to take a lot of internal development from the pitchers if the D-backs want to build a rotation and a bullpen for the long term because – I believe in the lineup, but the pitchers have always been the biggest question mark when it comes to this minor league system because Robbie Ray was great when he first got called up, and then the longer he, then the longer he stayed on that major league level with the D-backs organization, the worse he got. I always bring up the Alex Youngs, the Taylor Clarks, the Kevin Ginkles. Like, all those guys just haven't looked well. I mean, the guys, the pitchers from the Zach Greinke trade haven't really worked out. Humberto Castellanos, he was all right. There's a lot of D-backs pitchers. Luis Frias, he's pretty up and down despite having, like, really great stuff. Like, a lot of these D-backs pitchers just aren't very trustworthy um, when you look at what they've done in the minor leagues or specifically what they've done on the major league. So, Ryan Nelson is hopefully a guy that could break that trend of, of D-backs pitchers either just never reaching their ceiling or D-backs pitchers being just the flash in the pan that typically fizzle out after a couple more years in the organization because I'm hoping what we saw from Ryan Nelson wasn't just a flash in the pan. If he's able to be a long-term piece, that will be huge for this Diamondback squad who, like I said, needs more pitchers. And Ryan Nelson was basically a guy that was borderline top five prospect at the end of the 2021 season. Now he's been up and down throughout the top 10 in the D-backs, um, you know, Throughout the D-backs top 10 rankings right now, MLB, MLB.com has Ryan Nelson number eight among the top 10 D-backs players. And for Ryan Nelson, he's a guy that has talent that could be higher than the eighth best pitching prospect or overall the eighth best, pro- excuse me, he has talent that could be better than the eighth best prospect overall in the D-backs organization because this is someone coming out of college was maybe the D-backs reached on him a little bit because this is someone that was like an infielder and pitcher in college, but He's someone that just the velocity on his fastball was insane in college, averaged 14.4 strikeouts per nine in college. So it's why the D-backs reached on him in the second round. And that fastball was the driving force of him in the minor leagues. At one point, he was able to touch triple digits back in like 2020, 2021. He hasn't really been able to do that in 2022. His average fastball velocity in the minor leagues in 2022 was around 93 miles per hour. I think that's why his first start with the D-backs was so surprising and really blew away our expectations because no one expe- everyone knew he was going to be a fastball oriented guy but no one thought he was going to be throwing it with the heat and gas that he was throwing it in his first start because Ryan Nelson averaged 95 miles per hour on his fastball maxing out at 98 and it was just a breath of fresh air to see a D-backs pitcher just consistently throw some heat and gas because it looked like he might have gotten off to a bad start. He gave up a leadoff double to start the game, but then after that, Ryan Nelson completely locked in and retired the next 17 straight batters of the San Diego Padres, and he only needed 87 pitches to get through seven innings, and most of them were fastballs. Like The Padres didn't need to sit there and wait for a changeup or a breaking ball. Despite Ryan Nelson throwing those, 58 of his 87 pitches were fastballs against the San Diego Padres. And when you look at the splits of righties versus lefties, like basically um, the same amount of fastballs to both righties and lefties. But for righties, he went more fastball slider combination. And then for lefties, more fastball curveball changeup. And for both sides of the plate, he was going down and away with pretty much all the pitches he had. And it was crazy to see just Ryan Nelson just go up there and throw gas 96 pretty much every time and just rack up these Ks against this. You know, the Padres lineup has their up and downs in terms of their offensive uh, consistency, but there's still a pretty loaded lineup overall. So it was nice to see Ryan Nelson just go up there and say, guess what? I'm throwing you fastball every time. You don't got to guess what's coming because you know what's coming and you're not going to be able to stop it. Now, it did seem like his fastball velo was dipping a little bit throughout the game, specifically in that seventh inning. You could definitely see his arm getting it, getting a little bit more fatigued, missing the zone a little bit more. But 
I think more time in the D-backs organization on the major league level with a guy like Brent Strom should help his arm fatigue and overall velocity. And hopefully Ryan Nelson could get back to the dude who was hitting triple digits and sitting around 97, 98 with his fastball instead of the mid 90s because Ryan Nelson could be a guy that throws 100 more more often than what we saw in his first start because he didn't hit 100 one time. And he is a guy that used to be able to touch triple digits. So hopefully Brent Strom can pull that back out of Ryan Nelson because both Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly have added almost a tick of velocity on their fastball, and I believe I'm giving all the credit to Brent Strom in that area. So hopefully Ryan Nelson could could improve his fastball velocity too because Ryan Nelson's biggest strength is probably his command and his fastball velocity. His command throughout his time in the minor leagues, great strikeout-to-walk ratio. The problem is this season, at least, he's given up a lot more hard contact, given up a lot more home runs and just fly balls in general. So if he can get back, he likes to go down and away, go back to producing ground balls with the high strikeout numbers. I think that would be perfect run for Ryan Nelson. And I'm hoping maybe he could be a potential starter in this D-backs rotation going forward because right now with Madison Bumgarner, like I'm making that guy a long reliever or I'm like starting him every 10 days. Like it should be. Gallon, it should be Kelly, it should be Zach Davies as solidified top three guys pitching every five days. And honestly, the fourth and fifth spot should just be a rotation between two young guys and a massive bum garner because the young guys are doing their jobs. Basically, the whole rotation really is doing their job. Like Davies, Gallon, Kelly, every time they go through their rotation, it seems like they all put the D-backs in position to win. And then usually a Tommy Henry is serviceable. He either is good or he's just, you know, maybe he's not great, but he's usually serviceable at worst like he's really only had like one blown up start this season so really the only guy you could point to in the rotation that usually gives the d-backs no chance of winning is madison bumgarner so right now i would move his starts back even more toy lavello throughout this past month you know every now and then he'll be like all right mad bum we're pushing your start back a couple days so we can start you know tommy henry or something like that i would just do that a lot more often with madison bumgarner like realistically Bumgarner should have maybe two more starts the rest of the season because it should be just a straight up youth movement in that rotation because the young guys the young pitchers every time they come up they're pitching pretty well so I want to see more young pitchers come up for this D-backs organization because like I said this D-backs future will be predicated most likely on their pitchers and not their position players